prepared so then like now the, the opportunity comes for them to do it just so they can try it out or whatever but um, again I think it's everybody it's an individualistic thing that's what's beautiful about it there's no like a set way there's no like um, I suppose like bible of like, this is what you have to do in court and this is what you have to say it's a real it's a thing from the heart you know if you have to come up to someone and say well what should I say here and what should I say there well then you're not really doing it right you know what I mean it should come from within you should know what to say and again Education is the key, you know, educating yourself on your true position, who you are, relationship to the system, what power you have. Um, like we've forgotten that we are the masters and the government is the servants. This is, that's the way it's supposed to be. I think what Daryl is doing is fantastic, going around the country educate. I think people do need to be educated first mm -hmm. and it gives them the, the, um, the information to go off and research. For people who are out there now struggling with their mortgages, and they're getting depressed and maybe contemplating suicide, I don't know, or really getting hassled over it. What would you say to them? This is something I think about a lot. It does make me heart heavy because I know that it doesn't have to be that way. Like I know it doesn't have to be that way. And just, as you say, there's people up and down the country and they're in dire straits. And it breaks my heart because it's, that's a massive part of the agenda. It's about the emotion that people are feeling as a result of these pressures. It's part of the collective psyche, like, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the fear and the anguish and all this is part of our slavery, it's a part of our bondage. And the thing I would say to them is that there is hope and there is things you can do, and it's about being proactive and learning about the words and the words that are being used against you in these contracts, like learning about it. And there's one guy that I met recently, and he came to a meeting and he was saying that a couple of weeks ago, you know, he said, I had my head in my hands, like, I had, my business is gone, my house, or this, or that, and he says, I've never felt better. I said, I'm now, to, like, he's been empowered, like, you know, so regardless of what happens now, no matter what letters they're sending to him, he feels empowered, and he's enjoying it. He's actually enjoying dealing with the banks, you know. I say to people, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right, you know, you shouldn't be afraid of this thing, like, you know. Okay, that's brilliant. And, you know, the, one of the fair things that people are afraid of, because the diff, a, there is a difference between civil and criminal. <clears throat> now, one of the things that was said by, there's a chap called WB8, <clears throat> and we watched the YouTube, his oh, channel, and he said that he, in his research, 541 people went to jail for either non-payment of parking fees or um, a TV licence. Mm -hmm. Now, Obviously, when he, he said when he was brought up, criminals were people that killed people, that mugged people, robbed banks, not people that didn't mm -hmm. pay the parking fee. And that's the fear, that people will be asked to go to court and the judge will say, you're going to Mountjoy or whatever. How do you get around that? Well, it happened to me. Like I ended up in Mountjoy um, eventually um, when I was... Put, uh, it was... I don't know if you've seen the stuff in Stephen's Green, sitting on the grass. And uh, eventually they, they got me in Mount Joy. Now there's a lot of, I don't really go into it because there's a lot of stuff still going on there, that a lot of stuff that I'm not sure of, but it seems like they've made a few mistakes and a few errors along the way. But of course there's that fear of prison. That's part of it, that's what they're using. In 2009 there was a 90% increase of imprisonment for non-payment of fine, and also imprisonment for non-violent crime. So they probably correlate there anyway. Uh, when I was in Mount Joy, I was only in for eight hours. Okay, now I cost the system way more than they would. Have, Three hundred euro was my fine for non-appearance in court. The amount that they would have paid for transporting me and all that sort of stuff, the resources, just they didn't compare. It cost a hundred thousand euro, eighty to a hundred thousand euro a year to have one man in prison. Now, say he owes a massive debt to the state and he gets put in prison for it. Not only is the thirty grand debt that he owed gone. But we're paying an extra hundred grand to keep them there. So the whole prison system itself is completely illogical and needs massive reform. But with regards to the fear of it, like there was four people in there with me. All four of them were in there for non-payment of fines. And uh, you know, I I spoke to one guy and he's like, sure, I owe them, I owe three grand bill. I'm just not going to pay it. They'll put me in my joy and I'll be out in eight hours. It's grand, like. You know I mean? It allows people to have a mentality to say, sure, I'll just be out in a couple of hours. Because you do, you just go in and out. It's like a revolving door. I was out in eight hours. Like, and the way I was looking at it is, I wouldn't make eight hour, I wouldn't make 300 euro in eight hours work. Do you know that sort of way? But um, I've been in that situation, okay? They they used their resources against me. I had my royal man at my door the day after my birthday. Like, so, you know, I was very intimidated. Knocks on the door at night, is it the guards coming for me? That's not going to stop me, though. 
that's going to spur me on because that's like you know that's the injustice that's what I'm fighting against and all it has really done is shown me that the reality of the situation do you know what I mean it's like this is the way it is this is what it's like our system you say this words to people who really don't like it but we have a tyrannical system here you know the rule of law is not a play on the land anymore so if people do if people are afraid <clears throat> of not paying the parking fine and it's a case that you don't go to court and they say well you're going to enjoy Chances are it's an eight hour stint and they're out. That's that's correct, but I don't think that that's the I, I, I don't think that, that would be a solution. I'm not I, I'm not gonna advocate that like I'll just send these notices in and so if you go to prison you go to prison it's grand. Like that's I'm not advocating that at all. But um the system the prison system in general is used as a fear mechanism and I think that it's only effective if you're afraid of it. Do you know what I mean? If you give it over to it. Um, or you can turn that fear into motivation, you can turn that fear into enthusiasm to say like, I'm not going to take this, like, you know, I, I reckon I'm a bit of a thorn in their side, like, especially the, you know, the guard who arrested me, which I feel was unfairly, like, he'll never forget me, like, you know what I mean? Um, and another thing as well, like, the, you think back to the likes of Parnell, who was like a political genius, political tactician, and what did he do when he was disempowered, when he didn't have the voice that he needed in Westminster, a lot of them done this. They obstructed the system. They made it so the gears of the state were so slow, they're, they're grinded to a halt, that it was no longer economically viable for them to continue this process. I think that if this was the case in the courts as well, where what we're actually doing is we're sacrificing our person, our legal person, and we're throwing this onto the gears of the state, not the human being. Throw that onto the gears of the state, slow it down, slow it down, and then it'll become they're bankers, you know what I mean? It's all about money and you make it not economically viable for them to treat people like this, then, do you know what I mean? It, so, it push them to when you came out of, after your eight hour stint, <clears throat> did you get any more paperwork saying you still have to pay the fine? No, no. I went to the courts there about a month or two ago and this was all last year, this happened and the woman behind the court, behind the desk was saying, I don't really know what happened here, it's very strange now. There was a manual what did she say? Manual bench warrant issued for you, which is basically the guard is empowered to come and seize me and bring me to the judge and say, answer these charges. But she said, your two charges are still outstanding. Now, this was over a year ago. That guard should have come and found me long ago. And what it seemed happened was the other paperwork for the bail, which I signed under duress, they're actually holding me to something that I have signed under threat of imprisonment, like, you know, but that's still going to hold me to that. But that paperwork was sent to a different district and they pursued it. And when I tried to explain to him, he didn't even want to read the paperwork, it was real like stonewall sort of thing. Um, I'm actually studying law now in college, which was kind of making me look at the situation like, and I'm like, something kind of strange happened there. It seems like I was imprisoned without charge for, for forfeit of a bail, which I didn't actually agree to. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there is some sort of um, discrepancies there. But the impression that I get, which I'd probably like to think more than, I don't really know this is certain, is that the guard was basically told, like, you know, just leave it, like, just let it lie, and it would drift, it would fizzle away. Some, something with the paperwork ended up getting being sent to someone else, and it didn't fizzle away, you know? Mm -hmm. But I left messages with the, at the guard station where I was arrested. I need, I need to speak to this guard. I left two messages in one week. The second guard knew who I was, like, you could tell by the tone of their voice, and he never got back to me. Now, that's, you know, they have to get, they're obliged to get back to you. Like, he arrested me, I need to talk to him, get him to get back to me, and no word from him. So, you know, you can kind of infer what you want from that, you can infer your own conclusions. Um, but to me, as far as I'm concerned, like this is very powerful information and it's the, they don't really want to get now. There's a quote from Edward Mandelhouse and he's talking about this and he's saying um, he was an advisor to Colonel, uh, he was Colonel Edward Mandelhouse was advisor to Woodrow Wilson. And he's saying like very soon we're going to set up this national system of social insurance and the Americans will be forced to pledge over their biological property to us. And if any, if one or two should happen to find out our dastardly plot, we have in our arsenal plausible deniability. This is so mad, this information. It's so like, whoa, that couldn't be. How come nobody figured this out before? How come people haven't been doing this in court for years? Like, uh, because it's so, it's almost ludicrous like to think that it's baffling, this information. It's a whole other reality to consider, like, you know. So we really need to get educated and on the law and get to know. I know that myself, I felt empowered when I started studying this and you knowing about the Freeman and stuff. What's the, um, what's your take on the census? On the census, the most recent census? Oh, um, what is it? It's a head count, like, you know what I mean? All they really need to do is, oh, everyone put their hand up and count who's there. That's really all they need to do. 
it's obviously the information came out before this the US uh, the Sovereign Independent broke the information about the khaki uh, company before that even came out like you know I wasn't surprised when I read that do you know what I'm saying you know what the census is before you read before you know you read into it and what I had heard prior to this is that the census that was coming up maybe like a year ago that it was going to be handled by the military industrial complex in America so I was kind of expecting it anyway what we did with here in the series we had a, a sovereign camping trip like you know so just, just went up to the mountains for the night and um, but I was very worried about, I am worried about it, so many people have filled that in up and down the country out of fear, again out of fear, whatever thousand euro fine they said they were going to put on people is absolutely ridiculous when you consider you have a constitutional right to privacy, you know, and um, what the census called to a friend of mine and he was saying, well I got, I'm not really comfortable giving my information to the government, she goes, oh well we're not the government, we're a private company, it's like, well I'm not giving my information to a private company either, like, and um, the thing is, I remember when I heard talk about it before, Free man and sovereigns won't be on the census if they're really, you know, they shouldn't be filling in the census, like, they know what it is. So the idea with that is, like, you know, if you consider, like, people who are sovereign as being an enemy to the system, they don't know how many of us there are, it's a real kind of, like, um, but I didn't have anybody pursuing me or anything like that to fill it in, you know, I wouldn't have filled it in anyway, like, I would have had plenty to say at the door. Okay, what's the uh, future for Tina Soar? <coughs> Well, I think the sh sort of the short term goals is to just get the information out to as many people as possible. And um, everything on our website is free. It's all all the resources are free. And um, but at the same time, like I realise that it's not about the ambition isn't to convert everybody in this country to think a new way, to think that this is the way that we should live. It's about you know affording first of all showing the people that there is a choice. Here's the options, and then letting them choose. And if they do choose the system then that is fine, you have to accept that. But will they afford me, will they afford other people the freedom to live a life differently? And if not, you know, you can see the problem for what it is, it's tyranny. Uh, but the long-term goals, like, you know, it's all, I feel real strongly about community projects. It seems that, you know, we, particularly in Dublin, we don't really have community anymore, we have neighbours who we say hello to. But we don't have this sort of network, this spirit. And I really believe that that is a part of the NWO agenda, is to break down the community spirit, to break down the connections that we have with our neighbours, the bonds, real bonds, flesh and blood bonds, not government bonds. So one of the big things we would like to do, I suppose before I even set up the site, my, what I had in mind was having land based on the principles that we're talking about, um, with permaculture design, sustainable energy and just free land and make turn this air real land of the free like and um, that would be the long term goal and maybe have networks of little clusters of communities mm. popping up around the country, people taking their own initiative to do it like, you know. Like we have the information how to claim the land, how to do it all lawfully like, you know. It's just getting the motivation and I suppose so taking that leap of faith like, you know. Okay. You're doing a, a talk in this is Sob in what the Sob in the master plan at the moment. And you're going to do a talk later. You're going to just touch, touch base on what you're going to be covering. Well, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I've mentioned here. Um, but I only have 30 minutes to speak. So in that time, the hard thing for me doing this talk was trying to pick the core subjects that would, that would communicate well in 30 minutes. So what I'm going to focus on is the concept of the legal person. I'm going to go deep into that. And um, the two systems of law that are at play, the law of the sea, corporate law, commercial law, and the law of the land, the real law of men, flesh and blood men. Um, I'll talk a bit about legalese as well and just kind of give a basic idea of how the law is being used against us like um, just to kind of like just outline the kind of the terrain as it is. And the main thing I hope to do is just kind of give people the thirst to go out and look for more information and to kind of you know educate themselves on this and begin realizing that they are sovereign human beings, mm. that they have power and that they can influence the world around them. Mm. But well, we uh, appreciate what you've been doing here in Asor and all the work that you put into the guys yeah. and any promotion we can do, obviously we'll do for you and, uh, and what you're going to be talking about tonight. So keep up the good work Cheers. and thanks a lot.